In 44 BC, one of history's most enduring figures fell victim to arguably the most famous conspiracy in recorded history. The assassination of Julius Caesar on the floor of the Roman Senate took place on the 15th of March or the Ides of March, 44 BC. Prior to the Roman dictator being slain, the Ides of March was a day that had wide religious, lunar and other significance in the Roman calendar. Following the events of 44 BC, however, the day took on even greater significance. Beware the Ides of March, as William Shakespeare would write centuries later. The plot that led to the assassination of Caesar involved more than 60 senators and influential figures in ancient Rome. Why did these powerful people conspire in such a way? The motives of the conspirators were varied, yet fueled by self-interest as much as by any other noble motivation in many instances. Caesar's unrivaled power, lifestyle and popularity amongst the people were key reasons. In the years prior to Caesar's assassination, his life reads like a mixture of an epic film and a scandalous soap. After conquering vast lands in Gaul and other places in the name of Rome and Caesar, of course, the Roman general triumphed in a civil war, became dictator for life, and took an Egyptian queen as his mistress. None other than Cleopatra, who was living in Caesar's villa near Rome in 44 BC. Furthermore, Cleopatra claimed her son was Caesar's illegitimate child. Needless to say, Caesar's epic life created many enemies, particularly amongst traditional factions back in Rome. Among the various conspirators, three men stand out as notable players. Two are well known, made famous by the likes of Shakespeare, namely Brutus and Cassius. Yet there is another key conspirator, someone who knew Caesar much better, making the betrayal much greater. His name was Decimus. From a noble family whose name had lost some shine, Decimus had been a long-term ally of Caesar. Yet why did they turn against him? One reason for Decimus's betrayal was Caesar's refusal to honour him with a victory parade. Furthermore, Caesar was looking at others to be his successor. In the winter of 44 BC, Cassius, a nobleman and trained soldier, began working on the plot to kill Caesar. He recruited Brutus and Decimus shortly after. Decimus had Caesar's trust and even dined next to the dictator the night before his death. Furthermore, on the morning of the 15th, Caesar decided not to attend the Senate meeting that noon, perhaps due to whispers of a conspiracy. It was Decimus who visited Caesar at his home and convinced him to attend the fatal meeting. During a Senate meeting on the Ides of March, Caesar was assassinated. Sitting on a podium in the Roman Senate just after noon, Caesar found himself surrounded on all sides. The Roman dictator was stabbed to death 23 times in a bloody affair. In the immediate aftermath, Decimus provided security for the conspirators. His group of gladiators also served as a private security force, and they escorted the assassins from the Senate floor to safety, protecting them in the chaotic days that followed. What goes around comes around, however. Less than two years after the fatal Ides of March assassination, Decimus was executed after his soldiers turned on him. The following year, two of the other main conspirators Brutus and Cassius committed suicide after losing the Battle of Philippi. In relation to Rome, the events that transpired after the assassination of Caesar were not the ones desired by the senators. The Roman Republic eventually fell after a series of civil wars and skirmishes, giving rise to the Roman Empire. The first emperor of Rome was none other than Caesar's adopted son and grandnephew, Octavian, who renamed himself Augustus Caesar. History knows him as simply Augustus, who went on to rule the Roman Empire for four decades, 
between 27 BC and 14 AD.